Dave Cushman and his uh, website. Um, that's the um, uh, URL for it, if you're uh, interested. I'm sure most people have heard of Dave Cushman's uh, website, but I do still come across quite a lot of quite experienced beekeepers, and um, they, they've never heard of it. So um, is, um, uh, in the next hour and a bit, I'll uh, be uh, telling you what, to, what little I know about it. <clears throat> uh, there's a photograph of Dave, one of the few that... Um, that um that there are um that was actually taken by me in the um uh bbka uh, boardroom uh during the biber meeting that was um sorry that was oh here we go yeah um <clears throat> dave and myself first started exchanging emails um i think about uh, about the turn of the century or just a shade uh before uh, really as a result of um uh, I think probably the early days of his website. I really cannot uh, cannot remember, but I believe the initial uh, email came from him. Um, thinking about it, it was probably a little bit earlier than that. Uh, we then subsequently met at uh, Gormanston and certainly saw each other uh, each year. And we became very friendly. Uh, Gormanston, by the way, is the um, uh, Irish uh, summer school, week-long uh, summer school. Um, we became very, very friendly. Um, now, the information that I've got here has come from several sources. Um, some memory of uh, speaking to him, uh, some his own um, uh, information, and some that I've gleaned from various other places. I did find some what I consider to be fairly dubious information online, um, but I was a bit concerned about that, so I, I sort of discarded that. What I'm telling you, I believe to be uh, uh, correct. Um, I'm withholding nothing. Um, there's a few warts and, and, and all, but um, uh, with somebody who um, who's as prominent as him, there's likely to be one or two anyway. There are a few gaps. In fact, there are quite a lot of gaps. Um, things, uh, you know, times that I cannot um, uh, fill in uh, at all. And there is a little bit of conjecture in a few places, but it will be obvious because I will uh, uh, I'll tell you. Dave and myself, I consider, were fairly similar people. Um, we were roughly the same age, um, both engineers, although in different um, uh, different spheres. We both ran our own businesses. Uh, we were both long-time beekeepers, although I did start 10, about 10 or perhaps 12 years uh, before him. We were both teachers in um, uh, different ways. I tend to stick to the... Uh, more practical stuff. Uh, Dave was um, certainly into the technical beekeeping uh, a lot more than me. Both of us uh, were fairly forthright. Um, Dave was, and uh, to a degree I still am, or can be. <laughs> and we both like to be busy. Um, certainly neither of us were idle, and um, if there was something to be done, we'd get on and do it. If not, we'd find something to get done. And both of us, in different ways, um, try to help people and beekeepers uh, where we possibly can. <clears throat> that's him. That's where you get the DA Cushman from. Uh, he was born on March the 6th um, in um, uh, Leicester in 1946. Um, this is his mother and father, and he had one sister, Angie. Now, I, I suspect they're all dead now. I believe they, 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 they're dead now. I certainly know his mother is. And his father, if he's alive, will be uh, best part of 100. And I understand his sister is now uh, passed away. He married a lady called Kathleen in 1987 and um, uh, took on her uh, two children, both girls. He had no children of his own. <clears throat> his wife predeceased him by several years. And um, in his latter years, he lived at Syston in Leicestershire. Now, where he was... Um, uh, uh, brought up, I've no idea, but obviously around about the Leicestershire area, he certainly had a Leicester accent anyway. His early life, he passed the 11 plus, and uh, um, certainly my part of the country, not many did that. Uh, so he's obviously quite a bright lad at that age. <coughs> Between 13 and 16 uh, year old, he was uh, an army cadet where he um, uh, developed his interest in uh, shooting. 
Like a lot of kids, he was a bit rebellious at school and he left at 15. Whether he, um, he had any help in that, that's a decision or not, I've no idea. And for a time, he was briefly um, a TV engineer. So whether he work, worked, um, who he worked for, I've, I've no idea. He became a student apprentice at Partridge Wilson, who make electric vehicles, you know, electric milk floats, or made electric milk floats. Um, they went out of business in about the mid-1970s, I think. In 1967, he started a degree course at Rugby College uh, of Engineering um, uh, Technology. Now, I've absolutely no idea what the result of that was, whether he completed the course or not, I don't know. But that was where he had his first dealings with uh, computers, which in them days must have been uh, quite, quite, quite big affairs, as big as a wardrobe. Uh, not quite like that, but you know what I mean. <clears throat> um, and then he took on um, several jobs in various places. Uh, and there are some of them. A draftsman, project engineer, uh, mechanic with Formula 2 racing, uh, freelance photographer, uh, which I think from what he said was a, a sort of part-time job, did weddings and that sort of thing at the weekend. And he's a qualified silversmith, although I never ever saw any of his, uh, his work. There are probably others as well, because um, people as talented as that can usually pick their hand, uh, put their hand to uh, almost anything. Uh, Apex Enterprises took up quite a bit of his, um, his life. And he started that at the age of 14 as a um, uh, doing radio and television repairs. And uh, uh, it was poss quite possible to do that in, in those days. But these days, of course, with, um, uh, with things as they are, 14-year-olds uh, wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't probably be allowed to get anywhere near the radio and TV. Uh, <coughs> he had various activities to augment his income, which I think was something like the photographic work. Um, and then he, uh, he kept Apex going uh, as a part-time uh, enterprise uh, uh, for a long time. And then about his mid-30s, uh, he then uh, started full-time. And over the years, he did a lot of different sorts of things, uh, like electronic equipment and darts accessories. So can't be much farther apart than that. Uh, some printing. Uh, sort of trophies that you get for um, winning a tennis tournament or something in a local village, a uh, tennis club, uh, mechanical engineering and ammunition manufacture, which I assume is just an extension really of his interest in uh, shooting. Um, and then I think probably after nine, sometime after 1979, he uh, started manufacturing BIs and beekeeping e equipment. And it's that that I want to try and concentrate on uh, this evening, <clears throat> or this afternoon, call it what you like. Um, it must have been pre-1984 when it started, because here is a pretty poor copy of one of his 1984 price lists. Now, there were usually 16 pages of very close uh, uh, space type. Uh, as with a lot of um, uh, catalogues and lists in those days, uh, beekeeping ones anyway, there were no, pho no photographs and very few drawings. But the front page uh, was always a queen marking colour for whatever year it was. So presumably, um, blue is uh, 1984. He had a pretty comprehensive list and he sold seconds. Now, I reckon that was before any of the others. It was certainly before Thorns, and I believe they were the first ones to genuinely sell, sell seconds. Uh, you just couldn't get them out of the manufacturers because they were so proud, or in those days, they, they were so proud of their premium grade um, that they didn't want to be seen to be selling um, uh, bits with, not, uh, you know, parts with knots in and that sort of thing. Now, his 1988 list sold 11 different types of national hive stand. Hive stand, not floors, but hive stand. I'll come to floors in a minute. 14 types of national floor, and that was before open mesh floors became popular in this country, and there were none of them. They were all solid floors. He also sold top B space, British Standard Hives, uh, National and um, uh, WBC, <coughs> which in 
when nobody else did as a standard. Uh, if you wanted it, then you had to ask it and they would machine out the, um, the existing ones. He designed a, um, a hive called the Rational Hive, which is based on a national, but was top beast base. He simplified it and uh, he considered it was uh, um, a, a better design. He was also one of the early ones to use cheaper materials. So pine, plywood, um, hardboard, all sorts of things like that, which are now more or less a, a commonplace. Um, but of course, for the top beast space hive, it's only the sofas and brew boxes that uh, really gets uh, affected. And he also uh, advertised being able to modify any standard equipment that uh, that you wanted so let's say you wanted a 14 frame uh wbc you could have it because uh, he would uh, just go and make it uh whether well, actually sold many and or made much money out of it i've absolutely no idea <clears throat> those who are super keen been keeping bees um any length of time will remember these ad advertisements usually right across the bottom of the page of either beecraft and uh, a british bee journal um, but that, that was his advert. <clears throat> now, it, uh, it did go downhill. He, at, uh, probably at his height, he had three to four full-time employees and one or two uh, part-timers. Now, doing all the things that he did, um, I wonder if there was a skill diversity uh, a problem and perhaps some of the things couldn't be done by some people and could be done by others and uh, and that sort of thing. That, in my experience, with that um, small number of employees and the wide diversity of what he uh, what he made, I think might mean that um, there was quite a lot of uh, inefficiency, but I don't know. He went bankrupt in 1995, and in his own words, it was mainly due to expanding too quickly during a recession. Um, but being a businessman myself, I've taken a look at this and um, I think there may well be something else going on at the same time because there's an awful lot on his website as made by Apex Enterprises. And if you look closely, there are a lot of things that are just non-standard. And I'll give you one example um, in a minute. And, um, you know, if you make those sort of things, you've got, you've got to stop them. And I just wondered if he wasn't making and stocking either very specialist equipment or something that people didn't uh, didn't necessarily want. I mean, it's a standard um, national hive, let's say, is uh, bottom bee space. There aren't too many people, apart from me and Dave Cushman, I suppose, or Dave Cushman and me, rather, who, uh, who want some um, uh, uh, top bee space. And perhaps their people were sort of not quite frightened of, of, uh, of buying things, but weren't too sure... Um, whether, whether two or not. So perhaps also there was overstocking slow moving lines, which of course um, uh, gives you two problems. One, of course, is cash flow. And the other one is um, uh, the time spent uh, making things when you could probably do something that was more profitable. Around about the time, <clears throat> um, late 80s, early 90s, there was a, a great drop in the number of beekeepers because the, um, the self-sufficiency boom, which was at the end of the 1970s, that actually only lasted about five years. So I guess there was probably a lot of second-hand equipment on the market, and uh, people would probably buy that rather than buy new. And I do wonder about his, um, uh, his ability to be a, a, a businessman. I think probably um, he might have looked back and said, mm, I made a few mistakes there. But the thing is, we'll never know. And it doesn't really matter now anyway, because the, uh, the chap's gone and probably so have all his employees. Now, between 1995, uh, sort of after 1995, rather, I'm unaware of any further uh, employment. Uh, he was uh, quite ill, which I will explain explain a bit later um i'm not aware that he was registered disabled but i'm fairly certain he would have qualified and he was the sort of guy that um uh that would have made use of um, any uh, sort of facility such as that 
Now, I'm not sure if he was ever discharged as a bankrupt or not. My guess is probably no, because I suspect um, he um, he didn't have uh, enough income to uh, to discharge himself. But I, I really don't know, and I know nothing, nothing about that at all. Here's an example of something that Edward is um, uh, not catalogued, but the list. <clears throat> it's an extension. This is an extension for a frame. So to turn a shallow frame into a deep frame. And he made these. And he also made the clips that went on the end. Yeah, there they are. The clips that went on the end to, um, uh, to hold it together. Now, um, <sighs> There aren't too many people going to find a use, use for that because you tend to use one thing or the other. Um, but um, but Dave did it. It was an idea. And, um, you know, he put it in his catalogue. <clears throat> he had loads of other interests, and I've just um, uh, listed a few down here. And uh, all of those, um, he had website. For, well, yeah, he had, had a, a website for most of those uh, as well. And uh, several others too, so um, he was um, he, he was quite in, quite an involved um, uh, a character. Um, he did have health issues. <clears throat> if you've read the summary for the um, uh, this presentation, uh, you'll know that. Uh, at the age of about twenty five, he was diagnosed with Hodg Hodgkin's disease. <clears throat> I've known a few people uh, have it, um, and. Apparently, according to Dave, he was, if not the first, he was one of the first to uh, be cured. Whether that was actually right or not, I've no idea. But if he if he had it, which I uh, I, uh, I believe he did, you've got to believe the man. Um, he was still um, alive a few years later, anyway. Um, in 1987, he injured his right hand in a woodworking machine. But I have to say, I never saw any evidence uh, of it. 1993, he contracted uh, meningitis. 1997, he had a heart attack. So he was uh, he was a bit like a dog that's called Lucky, um, if you remember that joke. Uh, on top of that, the poor chap was diabetic too. Um, so there he was um, uh, very often either injecting himself or, or dosing himself up with, uh, with pills. And I suspect there were other things um, uh, wrong with him as well. He without being unkind to him he was certainly in a bit of a state um he got very tired physically tired that is so his brain was still very active and uh, you know so if he he couldn't walk very far at all in fact he didn't walk at all he he, he basically shuffled and uh he uh, all i ever saw him were wear sandals or very light sort of shoes and he, he just sort of shuffled along but i never ever ever heard him complain uh, about his condition not not once um i mean if if we have a sprain our wrist or a bad back or something like that or or whatever we uh we have a little bit of a moan about it never anything like that from dave dave at all as far as his beekeeping is concerned um he first um his first interest was at the age of four um he told me that and i think i've seen it in um in one of his uh, documents somewhere but I don't know whether it was a family member or a neighbor or whatever. Um, you know, four seems quite young, but uh, uh, if he's an inquisitive child, then he's probably going to get his nose stuck into most things. <clears throat> he actually started beekeeping sometime in the mid 1970s. I'll say 1975 there. It's probably no later than that, but could be anywhere after, you know, about 1971, perhaps 1972. He was a, a long-term member of Leicester and Rutland Beekeepers Association. And uh, I know at one stage he was on the committee. Whether he was ever an officer, I've uh, no idea. But if there was um, a shortage, Dave will pitch in and he could literally do uh, anything from a treasurer, secretary, chairman, whatever. He, he could do it. <clears throat> at one stage, he was semi-commercial. I know he had... At one stage, uh, more than 35 colonies, but from various bits I've gleaned from all sorts of places, it could well have been up to around about 100 at, uh, at one stage. 
he was certainly interested in bee breeding and he was, I think, one of the founder members of the now defunct bee, uh, bee Instrumental Insemination Group. That's it, big, yeah. Uh, although, like everybody else, he started off with whatever bees were available, he fairly quickly um, became an enthusiast of our native bees, Apis mellifera mellifera. He did a lot of experiments. Many of them are... Uh, detailed in, in in his website. And rather like me, um, he questioned mainstream thinking, if you heard my uh, my presentation a couple of nights ago. And, um, you know, there's just so much in beekeeping that we're told it's, um, uh, that uh, needs checking out, let's say. <clears throat> I know absolutely nothing of Dave's practical beekeeping. I've... Um, spoken to Leicestershire beekeepers uh, several times now and I've not come across anybody who can remember him with his actual practical beekeeping so I've, I've, I've no idea at all. All I know is he was very knowledgeable scientifically he wasn't a scientist um, but um, uh, if you wanted to know something you know the length of the um, third segment of the drone's antenna or something like that he'd know where to find the information he was very, very knowledgeable. I suspect, but I don't know, he'd certainly stopped beekeeping by uh, the turn of the century and sometime within the couple of years before uh, then, I think, simply because the poor chap was, uh, was so ill, he, couldn't, he, he just couldn't do it, full stop. There was no argument about that. There he is, I suspect. Back about 2005, uh, giving a lecture at uh, Gormanston. <clears throat> I think it was on uh, websites, you know, make, build your own website. <clears throat> um, being a photographer, he also uh, took uh, uh, photographs of people. And this was me instrumental in his instrumentally inseminating a queen and I didn't even know he'd taken the photograph and, and, uh, 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 until it appeared. So that's a little bit about his website. There's more to come. Uh, sorry, a bit about the man rather. A um, uh, bit about the website to, to come there. The earliest material I can find is um, April 2000. So I assume that is when it started. He was uh, self-taught. Uh, nobody uh, uh, taught him anything. He didn't go to a course or anything like that. Everything was hand-coded, HTML hand-coded. And it was to the highest standards as well. He just wouldn't have anything to do with any of the packages uh, at all um, because he said that um, they were, uh, he considered they were unsafe. They may well have been at that time. I really don't know. Um, uh, but um, that's what he did. Everything was hand-coded, so he learned HTML. Anybody who's uh, seen his website will know that he's developed his own style um, and he's, uh, he's certainly distinctive. What he did was um, something which might appear quite simple, but it was actually quite clever. He, he just dated the uh, updates. Um, now, I think they were uh, automatic, but it doesn't really matter. And um, that's one thing that people um, uh, ask me about uh, currently. I don't update them because um, I did never find out how to. So he, he had some way of doing it. <clears throat> A lot of things are cross-referenced either to other pages or to external sources, which subsequently caused me quite, quite a bit of problem. Um, but I will discuss that as we, we go on. Right now, the original website, I I think, um, was intended only to be quite a small one, but it grew, and it outgrew uh, everything. So in two thousand and four, he just redid it, and um, uh, that was a monumental task uh, on its own. But it was on a different platform, and um, but it's all all hand coded. And for a long time, there were two Dave Cushman websites uh, on, uh, online. Um, 
But whatever you say about it, it has become known and respected as um, probably the world's most comprehensive and authoritative uh, beekeeping website. It simply is the best. Several people have tried to repeat it um, rather amusingly. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, they've uh, all failed. But I do know that it's actually accessed by uh, researchers. Uh, quite what they get out of it, um, I, uh, I don't know. But I've spoken to several researchers and they uh, say, oh, yeah, you, you the guy that runs Dave Cushman's website. Yeah, we, uh, we, we, we use it. And um, I went to Apimondia last, hang on, no, year, year ago last September in Montreal, and uh, several um, scientists there told me that they used it. Uh, scientists, researchers, call them what they like. Now, because of his uh, illness, <clears throat> uh, he spent 15 or 16 hours a day on his website. Um, well, he obviously got quite uh, uh, quite quick at it, but I'm afraid I'm unable to spend that, uh, that sort of uh, uh, time on it. Um, but that's the corner of his uh, one of his rooms where he uh, um, uh, where he did all the work, and uh, as you can see, he's got three screens there. Uh, there's quite a lot of uh, more equipment too, and there was an awful lot of information that he um, uh, uh, that he he got information or resources rather. <clears throat> so the material on the website, uh, all of it's sound. Um, there's no sort of what I call the fluffy stuff. Um, much of it was actually written by Dave himself, either perhaps bringing together three or four um, uh, scientific papers or perhaps uh, a topic from various books or whatever. Uh, a lot of it he wrote himself. There was virtually no cut and paste with, uh, with uh, uh, Dave. One thing I liked about him was he willingly gave credits. So if he got it from somebody's book, Wedmore's book or um, Hooper's book or whatever, um, he, he would willingly give uh, uh, credits. <clears throat> and it's incredible where he found the information. Um, there's some stuff there. And I cannot even find um, the, uh, the, the original. So he knew people. He knew where to look. He knew where stuff was stored. Uh, and I know he had an awful lot of certainly paper documents and uh, 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 books and all sorts of things, uh, which I'll briefly um, uh, touch on a little bit later. For some reason, he didn't like PDFs. Um, and I could never, ever discover why. Oh, no, no, the same things. I don't like them when, rather than to tell me what was wrong with them. Um, but I think they've... they've they're pretty secure. So what it, what the issue was, I've no idea. He did spend a lot of time on reconstructing things. So perhaps if there was a label, or let's say on a uh, on an item, uh, he would uh, and he, he he couldn't photograph it or or copy it or whatever. He would just reconstruct it, and uh, that must have been very very time consuming. Which perhaps he could have spent time on other things but it was his time it was his website he could do exactly what he liked with it if he liked <clears throat> um, he was great at displaying material he didn't necessarily agree with if it was something that was used that he didn't um, think was um, uh, particularly good if it would help someone uh, he, he, he would put it on and uh, uh, that in my view was admirable admirable what he also wanted to do was to reach everyone worldwide. It wasn't just an English or, you know, English and Irish um, uh, website. If somebody in Fiji or, uh, or Indonesia um, uh, could find a use for something, he would put it up. <clears throat> and this is rather typical of some of the things he did. Although if you wanted to make frames, uh, you could uh, you could get these dimensions uh, elsewhere. He put them up on his website, so it was easier for people to make frames if they wanted to. I don't know anyone that makes frames these days, so uh, you could argue that he was probably wasting his time, but he thought it would be useful, and again, it was his website, off he went. 
Um, this is typical of a um, uh, 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 of coding, page of coding, and um, all of this. Okay, there would have been some cut and paste, and he would probably have had a standard pages. Although I have to say, I never found any, um, you know, sort of templates. Um, but you know, if you take uh, take something uh, like like this, you know, that um, uh, forward slash there. If it was a backward slash or it wasn't there, it could mean that something is shot about all over the place. So it's actually usually got to be right. There, you know, there, there are things you can, you, you, you can get round. Um, but, um, uh, you know, there's um, uh, 45 lines there in some on some pages of five or 600 uh, lines, all with that sort of stuff on it. But if anyone knows anything about um, HTML, then uh, encoding that's um that's how it's done he would put up accurate drawings as well and things like this uh, national section rack um if people wanted to make one uh, they could because there's the drawings <clears throat> the fact that nobody really these days uh, uses national sec section racks uh, is not neither here nor there he was happy he was helping somebody and that was good enough uh, my assessment of him, he did have a reputation for being a little, a little bit abrupt with some people. Um, uh, but don't forget, the guy was ill, and uh, quite ill as well. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, perhaps people misinterpreted um, what, what they saw and what they heard. He did have critics, um, mainly people who saw him as a threat because he was... Uh, telling people that some of the stuff that they were um, peddling wasn't necessarily correct. So um, uh, I know exactly how he feels because I get exactly the same from certain quarters, but I, I don't mind that at all and neither did he. He was held in very high regard by what I call good beekeepers. Uh, I don't just mean people who think they're good. I mean actual good, sound, sensible beekeepers. And... Um, uh, he, he was known as uh, as cushy by a lot of people and um, you know if they wanted to know something I'll look on cushy's website and um, hopefully that's still uh, still going on I found him very approachable and very responsive and I've sat with him um, because at, uh, at, at Gormanston the, the college where the um, uh, where the course is held um, there's a seat um, right out the front, in the front foyer, really. <clears throat> and uh, he very often used to sit there and people would come up and chat to him. And people he sort of never seen, never known or anything like that, ask him a question. And even the most simple questions, uh, Dave would, uh, what Dave would respond to. And he wouldn't just give them the answer. He'd, he'd sort of get into a discussion with them and tell them a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. Oh, you need to look here. You need to look there or whatever. And he, I found him very, very good. Um, we had similar attitudes um, uh, to life and beekeeping, really. And, and we come from diff similar backgrounds. So we both understood each other. So we actually got on pretty well. Uh, we, had, uh, we had an awful lot of laughs together. Um, very often um, at somebody else's expense. But that doesn't matter too much because don't forget, beekeeping is fun. Um, he could actually get the wrong end of the stick. Um, if somebody sold him uh, some duff information, um, he tended to believe people a bit more than he should have done. Uh, but that was okay because um, uh, if I uh, if he told me something, um, I if I say to him, "Well, hang on, Dave, uh, that's not quite right, and it's not right because he was quite happy to change his mind. He he wasn't um, he didn't just um, uh, uh, take everybody's uh, word just for sake of it. The pair of us joined Bibber, the Bibber committee, at the same time, which I think was about 2006. I can't be too sure about that. Unfortunately, it was a poor time for Bibber. Um, there had just previously been some uh, uh, fairly hefty uh, resignations, and I have to say things weren't in too great uh, a shape. Um, there was a website <clears throat> which, um, uh, from memory, cost. They, they were paying 
300, somebody 300 pound a year to maintain this website. And then they were moaning because um, um, there were no updates. Uh, well, then the, the chap came back and said, well, hang on a minute. You've given me nothing to update. You know, I'm not a beekeeper. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a web builder. Um, that caused a little bit of a problem. And Dave said, well, uh, uh, I can do it or I will do it. Uh, so um, for uh, a couple of years or so, he was um, what he called a web manager. Uh, this is almost till he died, actually. Uh, he was web manager and I was a web editor simply because nobody else wanted to know. Nobody on the committee at the time knew anything about websites or anything like that. And uh, I won't say too much about it, but the people at the time, um, uh, once we started doing it, they then wanted to control everything, uh, which I have to say made things quite difficult. <clears throat> he was a very fair man, and he tended to support those he felt were wronged, uh, although um, he may well have felt they were wrong because I, he only heard their side of the story. Um, uh, which did put him in a little bit of a bother uh, on a few occasions until uh, uh, un until he was um, uh, uh, put right. But he did take the trustee's responsibility very, very seriously. You wouldn't get anything past uh, Dave. Um, if you've been a trustee of anything, um, you obviously know the, um, uh, the responsibilities. Um, but occasionally you can sort of turn a blind eye to thing. Absolutely none of that with Dave. No, it's uh, we're all um, we're all responsible. Let um, uh, we, we do it properly. Now, because of his illness, he appeared to to sort of slouch and be asleep in in, in meetings, especially, which uh, didn't go down too well with some people. Um, but in fact, he was uh, he was taking it all in. And he really did have um, a very clear mind. In fact, right up to the end. He was very knowledgeable about many things outside uh, beekeeping. And he had an incredible memory. Um, and he could, he could remember where things were. Um, he can almost remember um, uh, uh, passages of, 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 of books. Um, incredible memory. Um, but despite the fact that he was, let's say, looked up to by um, quite a lot of people, he really did think of himself as uh, being a very ordinary. I mentioned he'd help anyone, I think. He, he really would. And he was, he was very generous too. Uh, and one instance was at the National Honey Show, I think probably about 2008, something like that. I was on the um, the Bibber stand with him, and he came back with a little mini nuke, um, and um, it was it was a new one just on the market, and uh, I forget which one it was now. Um, I can picture it. Anyway, he came back, and I said, "Well, oh, we got there, Dave." I said, "A mini nuke." I said, "Did you did you buy that?" Was there was a sticker on the top front of it, ten pound. I said, "Did you?" Boy, or did they give it to him? No, he said, I bought it. I said, what did you buy that for? I said, you only got any bees. No, he said, but um, I looked at these frames, he said, and I've got an idea of um, uh, uh, putting those frames inside big frames um, so that people can get them built, uh, beekeepers can get them built out in a big colony. So he'd spent a ten of his own money to draw something to put on his website to help other beekeepers that is the sort of guy he was and in fact it's um uh, they are are still there he could be a bit undiplomatic um especially if he felt that somebody was um trying to um uh, uh, uh to get away with something that he didn't think he had a right to but i found him brilliant company he really was um and um uh, as i say he was uh, he was never down about his illness or anything like that and if he could smile, he would. If he could laugh, he, he, he would. He did collect an awful lot of uh, beekeeping uh, material. And some of it, I'm certain, uh, was the only copies that were um, uh, available uh, anywhere. 
uh, where he got stuff from, I've no idea. I really don't. And I think probably as a result of going to uh, Ireland, he had a very high regard for um, the standards of Irish beekeeping and some of the um, um, the Irish beekeepers, you know, their, um, uh, their handling standards and knowledge and that sort of uh, thing. <clears throat> but as with uh, everybody else, uh, he uh, declined. Um, he was ill all the time I knew him, really. Although until the last six months or perhaps a little bit more, he seemed to remain uh, fairly stable. He didn't seem to uh, to degenerate in the, in the time uh, I knew him. And for a long time, we were we emailed each other at least weekly, sometimes several times a week. Um, if he wanted to uh, know something, he'd send me a uh, send me an email, or if he wanted to check something out. Uh, same thing the other way. Um, I couldn't find something on his website, so um, uh, I'd email me and back. Do you know the answer to so and so? And we were always on uh, on email. And then I noticed at his very last lecture that there was a difference, and uh, that's when I think the um, uh, the final phase of his life was um, uh, 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 was beginning. And this is it. Uh, the Biba Conference, uh, September 2010, in Care in Tipperary. Uh, this is his very last lecture, which he uh, spoke on the Queen mating uh, quality. <clears throat> um, previously, if I sent him an email, um, if there wasn't a, well, he, if he if he went anywhere, he always used to tell me. So if he went to, I don't know, um, Scottish Convention or something like that, he would uh, he would say, I'm going away for three days or, 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 or whatever. I uh, won't be able to answer uh, answer anything. Anyway, when I knew he was at home, um, most of the emails I had from him were generally answered within an hour. And then they started getting slower and slower, you know, a day late, three days late, week late, that sort of thing. And, of course, I having seen him, um, in the condition he was, um, I, I sussed that, uh, that something was uh, wrong with him. Uh, and then at the 2010 National Honey Show, which was at the uh, school at um, uh, Weybridge, <clears throat> he was on the Bibber uh, uh, stand with me. Now, the National Honey Show is in, in October, and typical or fairly typical of the Bibber committee at the time. Um, nobody wanted to go on the stand, so Dave and myself were on there for two and a half days or whatever it was, and we set it up, you know, all this sort of stuff. Now, on the Thursday, which is always half day at the National Honey Show, uh, normally start about 12, I think, partway through the afternoon, he said to me, he said, there aren't too many people here. He said, oh, I just want to have a walk around, he said, and see what's about and get um, get the sort of take the atmosphere in, he said, because this is going to be my last show. He said, I'm just going to sort of walk about. <clears throat> um, and then the following day, um, he, he stayed down there in a sort of fairly cheap uh, bed and breakfast. Um, uh, following day, um, partway through the morning, he said, I, I'm, I, I'm too ill. He said, I, can't, I, I just can't take any more. He said, I've got to go home. Now, he, he drove one of these little Suzuki um, vans. I think they're called Carry or Cabby or Caddy or something like that. Anyway, <clears throat> um, he drove one of those. And um, from Weybridge to Leicester, I don't know what it is, 120 miles perhaps, something like that. I said, uh, you're not driving home, are you? He said, yeah. He said, it's only transport I've got. I said, Dave, you shouldn't be driving home. Well, he said, it's, it's, it's all I've got. Anyway. Uh, I couldn't talk him out of it. Uh, I suggest he got a train or whatever, uh, or even taxi, and I'll pay for it. Um, but um, he decided on uh, going, uh, driving home. So at the end of the day, I phoned him. That was the very first time that I'd ever phoned him. He had a phone, but he wouldn't use it um, because it cost a lot more than uh, emails, and he was genuinely short of cash. 
<clears throat> so I phoned him up, make sure he got home uh, okay. And I was on the stand for the uh, uh, rest of the show. So I didn't see too much of the show because um, uh, when there were two of us, you, you, can, you can say, oh, you know, I'm just going for a bit of a walk about or stretch my legs or whatever. Um, but, um, anyway, that, that was that. And then all of a sudden, the emails um, weren't answered at all from, um, you know, from almost that um, – uh, that that show, they, they weren't all um, uh, um, answered. So I then phoned him, took to phoning him every few days um, because it wasn't costing him uh, anything. And then in November, <clears throat> um, he told me that his doctor had given him a warning that um, the, uh, the end wasn't too far away. And surprisingly, and I can't imagine a doctor ever doing this, but this is what Dave told me. Um, he, the, the doctor had um, also told him when his, his, uh, his demise would come. And he said, it, uh, expect me to go um, uh, the second half of uh, February. And I, I, I really couldn't believe it. I was absolutely gobsmacked. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, you know, I, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm not I'm not a medical man, but I just cannot believe that a doctor would say that. But he said that, and subsequently you'll find out that um, what if even if a doctor didn't say it, it turned out <coughs> right. Now, previously to that, I'd asked him several times about um, uh, what was going to happen to his website when he um, uh, disappeared. And he'd always told me that there was an American trust that was going to take it over. Well, he wouldn't give me any details or anything like that. And I have to say, I was a little bit on the on the suspicious side. Anyway, um, I asked him um, uh, about the uh, American trust. Uh, oh, he said it's folded. <clears throat> so I said to him, well, and bear in mind the guy was ill. Um, I said, well, what's going to happen to your website then, Dave? Oh, he said, it'll probably keep going until it falls over. So I said, look, Dave, you can't, you can't do that. All the amount of effort that you put into it um, and uh, the amount of um, uh, enjoyment people get and the information they get from it, I said, you can't let a resource like that, um, that go down. So he said, well, he said, I'm really concerned, he said, uh, and one of the problems I've got, he said, is that if I leave it to um, uh, to somebody, he said, I'm concerned that they will um, use it for their own purposes um, rather than the standards that I've uh, that I've uh, set. So he said, well, there's only one person that you could possibly trust to um, uh, to take it over. He said, but uh, they're too busy. I said, well, have you spoken to them, um, you know, to, to have a chat, to sort of talk through how it could be done? And there's a great big pause. And he said, I am. And uh, I don't, uh, don't believe too much in uh, pressure, but there was certainly a little bit on my shoulders at that time. Um, so I, I, I just responded straight away and said, well, mm, yeah. Um, uh, look, Dave, your hand code and everything. I really only have a smattering of HTML, and I said I, I certainly couldn't do uh, uh, what what you're doing. Um, I've got no knowledge of websites, um, and I would probably have to use a, a package, and then it, um, it well, yeah, another sort of platform, and then it would have to be um, you know one of the um, a commercial ones available, um, and um, uh, I said, all the transferring over, I said, I just don't think I'll be able to do it. Um, but I said, I think I know somebody who might be able to help. Somebody who's, um, uh, who's recently retired. So I said, well, I think I can make a, a call and at least ask a question, uh, which I did. Half hour later, I got back to him, said, look, yep, uh, I think we can do it. And he was as pleased as punch. And um uh, you'd think the uh, um, as, as son had just come straight through his door. Anyway, <clears throat> asked what his wishes were, and he said, well, 
do whatever you like, he said, but whatever you do, please don't dumb it down. <coughs> Which was one of his great, uh, uh, great sayings. He said, please retain freedom from uh, copyright so that everybody can use whatever they want from it and um, not be concerned that they're, they're going to infringe copyright. He said, I want you to keep the beekeeping site going, but all the others, he said, you can do what you like with. You can, you can try and uh, keep them up to date. Or he said, archive them, we'll just remove them. He said, you please, please yourself. He said, it's a beekeeping one that I'm really interested in. <clears throat> so um, then another, another time I, uh, I phoned him, he told me that there was um, uh, what I could have which was all the hardware, so all these um, uh, uh, computers, all those three computers you saw, plus other bits and pieces that he had as well, um, uh, some relevant books, all his documents, uh, all the things that he collected over the years, all his various uh, bits and pieces um, of, um, of beekeeping kit. And what he said was that he's going to leave some of it to the Leicester and Rutler Beekeeping Association. He didn't uh, specify. Um, now, he got tired very, very quickly, and phone calls were probably no more than 10 minutes, a quarter of an hour. Anyway, I asked him how much it was, and he said, a lot. So, <clears throat> yeah, Dave tired after a few minutes. Um, he couldn't get upstairs um for the last six months of his life um hence the reason that um uh, i didn't have any emails and uh, all his um uh, all his computers were uh, upstairs and um so i tried to arrange a visit so i phoned him up and it happened to be the very last call i made to him it was february, february 14th 2011 and he said uh, i can't I can't speak at the moment he said i've got somebody around helping me write my will. And uh, eight days later, he died. So February 22nd, which was um, the latter half of uh, February 2011. That's when he died. But after his death, within 24 hours, there were two websites registered and there were people boasting online that they were going to take over his website. Don't worry, folks. I've got it all organized. And... I had several emails from <clears throat> beekeepers who were concerned that of, uh, 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 about this. Why they contacted me, I don't know. Probably because I knew him, they knew that I knew him well. Um, they certainly didn't know that he was um, uh, he'd, uh, given me his website, which he had at that time. Um, there's, there was another twist on, on the way. Um, yeah, so... Um, what I had to do, of course, uh, was I had to publicize that I was taking it over. That immediately met with disapproval from some uh, some quarters. But uh, don't worry about that because um, uh, I've had people taking a poke at me uh, ever since um, I, I took it over. So I'm, I'm fairly used to that anyway. There were quite a lot of concerned messages online too, various forums and that sort of thing, because Dave was a great one for um, contributing uh, uh, to forums, uh, the Irish list and all sorts of things like that. Anyway, um, I made contact with his family because I didn't quite know what was going on. And, uh, you know, it's not, not normal to, uh, for me to uh, contact the bereaved, but that's, um, that's what I had to do. And I'd found out, oh, they said, oh, yeah, we, 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 we know about you. He's, they said, um, uh, Dave left his website to you in his will. So all of a sudden, you can imagine it's gone from a gift uh, to a bequest now. And, of course, that had other problems because, of course, I had to wait for probate. Anyway, that took a lot longer than uh, expected. And... Um, not only was the one website, uh, there were 16 others that he was managing, including the Bibble website. <laughs> At the cremation service, quite frankly, the, the beekeeper attendance was very, very poor um, to the point where I was, I was pretty disappointed, really. I don't know how many beekeepers there were, but 
but probably no more than about 10. Uh, in fact, overall, there was an absolute maximum of 40 a a attended, probably, probably well less than that. And I read the eulogy. So the website Post Dave um, <clears throat> obviously took several copies. Um, now, his house was probably um, as untidy as mine. Um, and I was told, but I'm, I had no proof that, um, you know, because he couldn't sort of do any work or anything and had no money, his, his back garden was, he couldn't actually get into his back garden. So I was told, but whether that's correct or not, I don't know. Um, there were absolutely no instructions or passwords left um, how to get into his website at all, or even, you know, start up with computers. But then somebody knew a specialist, somebody who's used to doing this sort of thing for the uh, local council. So they engaged him and um, uh, he got in. It did take several weeks, what probate as well. In fact, it took longer than that, it took months. Um, all I got was an email, pa the email passwords and um, the various files on a stick. That's all. Yet um, a couple of weeks before Dave died, um, I was going to have um, all his hardware and most of his um, uh, beekeeping uh, uh, possessions. Uh, so absolutely no hardware or all the materials. So when I finally got access, um, I needed technical help, which I got, um, which I um, told you about. <clears throat> but I had a chat with um, uh, several beekeepers um, who I knew used it and knew Dave uh, as well, reasonably well. So I sought advice um, uh, from them about what I should do. And there were several views. Um, one or two people said that it was difficult to read on their screens. Um, some said, don't touch it, keep, his, um, keep it as it is, because it's Dave's style, it's Dave's, um, Dave's website sort of thing. Um, but if you want to do things different, then why not have just a different style for any new pages, which is really what I did. And, um, you know, as you notice, that's why there's different font on the stuff I've done myself. <clears throat> what I found out was it hadn't been regularly accessed since June 2008. So nearly two years before, <clears throat> I had the, all the, the reference material that uh, Dave said he was going to give me. Um, I found out that the family had actually dumped it. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff there that had historical value. Um, and um, I won't tell you how many skips there were. Um, but I was told, and it was quite a lot. <clears throat> so what I had to do was obviously make announcements about the um, uh, about the changeover, redirect emails uh, to me. Um, I was uh, told that there were 1,200 broken links. Um, when I actually got into it, there were over 1,800. Um, and what Dave tended to do was he would uh, link to other URLs, you know, other websites or resources. And, um, uh, of course, they hadn't been updated for um, uh, uh, nearly two years. And, of course, um, uh, people change their uh, web addresses. Um, uh, companies go out of business. <clears throat> all sorts of things like that. So I separated the non-beekeeping element and um, uh, just basically archived that. There were some obvious errors <clears throat> and there were lots of things that are out of date, like uh, advertising the BBKA Spring Convention, for argument's sake, for nearly two years before. Um, I, I, I took all the obvious things uh, out. I put up a disclaimer because there wasn't one. Uh, saying basically, and I don't know all the legality of it, but basically, if you take any notice of what's on here and you do it and there's a problem, um, the uh, uh, the onus is, is on you. <clears throat> Some of the pages I did uh, archive, um, but um, uh, I can't offhand remember any now. But if, if, if there was a problem with it, part finished, all sorts of things like that, 
than I archive, certainly for a time anyway. If there was any what I call doubtful um, uh, pages and sort of unnecessary material, I took that down. An example is that Dave, for some reason, had a bit of a, um, uh, a dislike for the BBKA, and he wrote some things which were um, perhaps um, not the friendliest uh, 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 things, but um, I, I, I just took them down, um, that sort of stuff. There were some pages that were empty where there was absolutely no material at all. <clears throat> If, um, uh, and I think what he did was um, he set uh, set something up, let's say swarming. He'd then name half a dozen pages, but he'd probably only populate two or three of them uh, immediately, and the others would stay empty for, for a time. So, of course, there were a lot of empty pages, or several hundred, actually. And what I did was um, I archived uh, those and then brought them back as I've found a material to, uh, to, to populate them. Um, we simplified the uh, code. Um, it wasn't, you know, the strictest HTML that, um, that Dave used, uh, but we, 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 we got by. And if I updated or rewrote uh, pages, <clears throat> Um, if I added to them, I put things like um, original page by DAC, um, or if uh, if there was an addition, I would just put my initials uh, at the end of it. <coughs> I either wrote or sourced new material, so various pages, and now I basically do everything. <clears throat> Whatever it is, in my view, it must remain Dave Cushman's website. Shouldn't be taken um, as um, you know somebody else's his name, even if as time goes by it will become, um, you know whoever um, who, 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 whoever takes it over, and there will obviously be less and less of Dave Cushman's. A few slight negatives: um, some of the pages have been lifted for other websites without permission, by the way, but it was well, copyright free. Um, um, this is only personal criticism, but on some pages, there's, um, I don't think, always enough information. Uh, I've tried to add to it where I've, I feel necessary, but I think it still needs uh, more. <clears throat> it's not always accurate, and some of the pages he um, were, were dated, um, such as um, I've been doing so-and-so for 15 years or something like that. Well, of course... And uh, five, five years' time, it becomes 20 years. So what I tended to do is modify things so to so to give a date, you know, that, that sort of thing. <clears throat> I know there's material taken without credit, although he's always asked for credit, and so do I. Free to take it, um, providing it's, um, it's not uh, commercial. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, please give credit. But I gave a talk. Um, I didn't give a talk. No, well, I've given a few talks, but um, I listened to a talk about queen rearing, and about half the um, uh, half the uh, uh, photographs and drawings um, were off Dave Cushman's website, and um, uh, there was absolutely no credit to, at all. <clears throat> He did spend, I think, quite a lot of time on what I consider minor items. Uh, and here's an example. <coughs> he, um, uh, the length of time it must have taken him to draw, to, uh, draw uh, uh, two wood screws. And the reason he drew them both is because if you look closely, uh, they're, they're different, uh, 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 different sizes. Um, you know, he didn't have to draw wood screws, but he did anyway. It was his website, so he did exactly as he liked. He was a perfectionist, and he'd rather get things right and spend a lot of time getting it right than just put something up that's there or thereabouts. Um, there was a view that he was a professor. Um, and in fact, I've got um, some emails, copies of emails, uh, where he's addressed as Dear Professor Cushman. 
Um, and he was never, ever, ever a professor. And I tried to find out from him on several occasions where it came from, but he would never, ever tell me. Um, so whether it was some sort of jokish nickname or something of, of that, I've absolutely no idea. Um, but he was definitely not a professor. Um, after he died, there was a lot of online discussion, and it showed to me that he really was um, uh, much, uh, much missed. Uh, to the point where, <clears throat> at one stage, the website went down for a couple of days. I can't remember what happened now, um, but, you know, might be something wrong with the server or something like that. On BSource, within six hours, there were 16 messages. What's happened to Dave's site? Has it, you know, crashed or whatever? That shows to me what Dave Cushman's contribution was uh, to beekeeping. So there he is again. In my view, he was a giant in um, uh, 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 beekeeping terms. But any questions, please, folks? Excellent. Thank you very much, Roger. Um, please put your uh, your questions in the uh, Q and A uh, box at the uh, at the bottom. Uh, there are <coughs> two questions so far, and they're both on the same topic. Um, actually, Roger, it's something that uh, we've had a discussion about in the past. Actually, and that's um, I thought it might be. Yeah, um, about the uh, website security um, not secure. Uh, we've talked about getting a, an SSL certificate uh, for the website. Um, before somebody asks, is it um, is it a problem? Uh, no, it's not a problem. Um, but sorry, I'm answering your question for you. No, you carry on. <laughs> you're, you're the technical man, and that is a technical thing. Yeah. Um, the, the, there is, there's no problem with that. Um, it just means that the data isn't encrypted between your computer and the website server. Uh, but because you're not transferring bank details or anything, there isn't any particular problem with that. But um, uh, it is something that uh, that Roger's uh, Roger's working on. A uh, couple more questions coming in. Uh, Andy, I remember Dave well, a uh, member of the same group. Uh, when he was ill, he gave his tickets to shows. That's nice. Yeah, he was a very kind, kind man. Uh, curious to know why he wasn't very keen on the uh, BBKA, but I don't know if we're going to go in that one to that tonight. Um I mean, not your views, Roger. Or, or no, any, it, 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 it definitely wasn't. Um, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I will speak about it, but I, I'm not very knowledge, knowledgeable about it. I don't know what happened, but around about that time, Leicester and Rutland withdrew from BBKA. And I don't, I don't know the reasons. I know there were uh, several of them who were, um, I won't say anti-BBKA, um, but they weren't best pleased with BBKA. And I, I really don't know why I didn't get to the bottom of it. I think it might have been before I was a BBKA trustee. I had a, had a very rough guess. Um, but I think I think it was I think it was connected, um, but I, I I don't know. So something had gone wrong, I suspect, between BBKA and Leicester and Rutland. But you know I don't I do, really don't want to be quoted. But I, it wasn't just Dave Cushman. I think there were others in, 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 involved as well. Um, <clears throat> lots of messages coming in saying thank you. Uh... <clears throat> Thank you for the website and uh, people using it monthly. Uh, Des says he's, he's learned so much from Dave's website. It's such a great resource. Um, and, and this is something that you've kept on yourself, isn't it, Roger? You've funded it yourself and, and kept on with it and kept hand coding it all. I mean, that is a mammoth task, right? I mean, I'm no expert in HTML. Which is at my age, yeah. Um... <laughs> no, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it, uh, you know, you get something wrong, like, like I said, just something like a forward slash, it, it's wrong or it's missing, and all of a sudden a photograph or an image gets uh, gets shot over to the right hand side where it was on the left hand side, all sorts of stuff, uh, stuff like that. Um, mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 
Um, thank you. Uh, Oh, uh, Christopher's saying thank you. That's the next three days gone. Thanks for the talk. So he's going off to Dave Cushman now to lose himself because that is something that can happen. You go to Dave Cushman uh, wanting to find out one thing and because there are links in there that take you to other things, you just get immersed in beekeeping. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, well, of course, another issue that he had was that... Um, he liked to link from one page to another page. But if you take something like, uh, I don't know, make an increase just for argument's sake, um, <clears throat> uh, you've got to, you really need to link everything to everything else. And with some of the bigger things, like perhaps increase and swarming, so what I've done is I've, I've just done um, one, one page that um, uh, that you can link to. Um, otherwise, you, you just got to remember all this lot, and it's it's uh, it, it's rather difficult. Mm. Um, Beyond wants to know who's going to uh, continue the uh, site after you throw in the towel. <laughs> Hopefully, many years from now, he, he hastens to add. Well, on. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get to a certain age, you know, you sometimes think to yourself, well, which day is going to be the last? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jackie asks a good question. What do you see will be the very long-term future of the website? Uh, from what point of view? From a technical point of view, I, I really don't know. Um, um, I guess it, it, it's obviously getting quite outdated as it, as it is. Um but I think there's just so much information on there that it might be difficult to change to um, another sort of system. But having said that, I'm, I'm looking at um, uh, moving it over to something like WordPress. <clears throat> so if anyone knows or is willing to do it, then give us a shout and I'll, um, uh, uh, I, will, uh, I will have a few words for them. Um, because whoever takes over from me isn't going to be a probably isn't going to be able to um, uh, to do it in um, HTML. <clears throat> uh, so it is going to take a a, a conversion of of some some description. So if anyone can do it, genuinely do it, then I'm happy to happy to speak to them, please. Um, oh, Jackie, Jackie goes on to say, with it being such a good resource, how about trying to crowdfund for the development of the website? That's an interesting thought. Yeah. Um, how many hits does the site get? Hands uh, I don't. I really don't know. Um, um, I, I know the figures come in, but I, I just don't don't bother too much. Hmm. Um, there's got to be several hundred a day, I'd have thought. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Well, is that a lot? Then? Yes, uh, that's um, all the questions uh, that have come in. Uh, and we've got Mr. Pierce on in fairly soon, haven't we? We have, yeah. Uh, please remember that we are not recording that one. Um, there may be some disappointed people when uh, when we hit the, the uh, target for the audience. So make sure you're in early. Um, uh, because uh, you, once once we hit that limit, there isn't uh, uh, there isn't an option to see it. Um, unfortunately, with that one. Uh, yep. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. There um, uh, there are one or two bits coming in, but they are uh, generally uh, yeah, statements rather than anything. Nice. Nice. Statement. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Roger, most grateful for that uh, fantastic insight into the man behind a resource that we all use, and and we we don't know. He was he was a clever it. character. Yeah, yeah. He, he didn't deserve the uh, uh, what he was dished up. You know, that's, mm. that often happens, doesn't it? Yeah, certainly does. Okay, uh, so I will. Uh, I'll see you shortly. <laughs> Thank you, amazing guy. What Dave or me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think he means Dave. He must have. Anyway, see no, you all in three quarters an hour or whatever it is. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant.